Hello everyone, this is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and today we are going to learn Ajax. And we are going to be getting information from another web page and displaying it on our page with Ajax with no page refresh. So if you come into Ajax in W3 schools, they say that Ajax is the art of exchanging data with a server and updating parts of a web page without reloading the page. So you're updating things on your web page without reloading anything. And they have an example here here where you have this content now but when you click change content all of a sudden an Ajax request is sent out to the server it grabs this information that you see displayed and then it will show you that information in this area and there was no page refresh so we are literally going to use this exact same example and we're going to do something extremely similar I'm just going to explain it a whole lot better than they did trust me so, the reason why we want to use Ajax, we just went over that. So now let's get into actually utilizing Ajax. So, all you will see is I have any clips. I just have a regular HTML document with a title called Ajax and nothing in my body. And a little disclaimer first, if you want to do this tutorial, you are going to have to have a server. Because as you said, as you saw in the explanation previously, we are exchanging information with our server. So you're going to have to have some kind of local host set up or you're going to have to have your site live somewhere else on a server because you can't exchange data with a server if you're not on a server. Okay? So, in our body tags, the first thing we are going to do is we're going to create some kind of button so that we can actually load what we want to when we click that button. Very similar to in the um, exercise I showed you previously in that, um, in that little example in W3 Schools. So let's just create a button, and I'm going to call it um, Load Ajax Content and save this. So if I come into my browser, and I'm in my local host, and I refresh the page, I see that button load Ajax content. Of course, it doesn't do anything right now because we haven't set it up. So the next thing that you need to set up every time you want to utilize Ajax is you have to create a div and an ID of where you want that content to be loaded. So this person is going to click this button and then all of a sudden we are going to load information into a div. So we obviously need to create that div of where we want to put the information into when they click the button. So just say div ID and let's close that div. So let's give this an ID of load here. So when the user clicks this button Ajax will go out, get the information we want, and then spit it back into this div. And it will know to give it to this div because of its ID. So we will identify this div by its ID. And now what we need to do is we need to create a um, an Ajax, um, a JavaScript file that will have all of our Ajax information. So within our, uh, within your source file, just create a JavaScript file for me. So whether you're in um, Dreamweaver or Notepad++, however you create a JavaScript file. So, so now I have a JavaScript file in the same source folder as ajax.html. So now I need to embed that source file in here. So I'm just going to say script type is assign text forward slash JavaScript. And then the source of this is javascript.js. And then I will close that. And now we are good. So if I come into javascript.js and I do an error check saying hello world, and I save javascript.js, then we can come in here, refresh the page, go to view page source, click that link of javascript.js and you see hello world. If you do not see hello world, then you made a mistake with your embed. So look at this code carefully and make sure that you are actually going to the correct file. If you see it, then we're good to go and we can move forward. All right, so now that we have this embed, now we want to create the JavaScript function, or the Ajax function, I should say, of what is going to happen when the user clicks this button. So let's give this an on click. So when someone clicks this button, we want to go to a JavaScript function. So let's call it load. And the two things we are going to want to send to this JavaScript function is the div ID of where we want this to be loaded and the page of what we want to go out and get. So if in here we want to put the div ID 
and we want to put the URL to whatever page we want to get. So let's say if the content that we want to asynchronously get with Ajax is in a file called, I don't know, um, ajaxtest.html. We would put in here ajaxtest.html. And then if the div ID of where we want to load this is in load here, we would say load here. So these are the two parameters that we are going to send. So obviously we need to create this ajaxtest.html page. So in here, let's create an HTML file. Save that. And then in here, delete everything. And just say, this is the information we want to load. And then I'm going to give it a break with Ajax. Okay, so this is the information that we want to load with Ajax. I'm going to bring this down here, line it up a little bit more. All right, so what this will do is when the user clicks this button, it will go to a JavaScript function that we write called load, and it will, and it will send the parameters of the ID and the source file of what we want to go out and get. So now let's make that JavaScript function. So in here, let's just say function load, and we are going to be getting the ID and the URL of whatever the user wants to dynamically load. Okay, so now when the user clicks this button, it will jump to the load function that we've created in here. And it will know to go to JavaScript.js because we embedded JavaScript.js. So it's all coming together. And we send it the ID and we send it the URL. So in here, we are going to write our Ajax of how we are going to go out and get that URL and put it back into our ID. So this is basically just setting up our workspace here. In the next tutorial, we are going to learn how to actually go out and get that request and bring it back. So thank you for watching. This has been Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com, and I hope this tutorial was useful.